Hi guys and good morning, 25th of June, just gone 8 o'clock here uh, in London, starting off with uh, a quick quiz, who are these fine young chaps on my right hand side, uh, we'll have a, a quick look over uh, the markets before coming back from, from yesterday, uh, pretty quiet really on the trading front, we had German <coughs> IFO out in the morning which was pretty much a, a non-event, if I just bring in the Euro into picture, you can see what usually can move markets a touch just help drift us higher uh, to eventually, you know, overnight getting closer to that 115 handle, which I'll talk about in a moment being relatively key. But the euro in a tight range has drifted on uh, this morning, despite coming down a touch, the pivot holding firm uh, in a day where a weaker dollar just continued. Uh, and that has helped along with other headlines which we'll come on to has helped gold push to a fresh six year high uh, and that is the, the clue that you're getting for that picture right there. Also oil helped uh, a bit by the, the weaker dollar into the back end of the session despite drifting lower uh, around uh, the, the, the open. Equities tight range um, however overnight with the new Iran sanctions uh, has just drifted lower a bit. Whether that's enough to keep us pushing down or not, we'll come on to. Um, not necessarily uh, new news that uh, the US have been putting uh, sanctions on uh, Iran, but enough just to, to drift us down. And, and with a couple of events later today which could shape equity markets in general, I'll just be uh, on our toes, especially going into the G20 uh, at uh, the end of the week where Trump and Xi are expected, expected to meet. So yeah, back to the, the picture and congratulations Andy, uh, not UB40, but Spando Ballet, presumably because of their hit gold, exactly, gold at a, no I'm not singing it, uh, gold at a fresh uh, six year high, uh, obviously it's come off a tiny bit uh, overnight, really strong move uh, for, for the precious metal. Helped by a number of things, it has to be said, with the, the Iran sanctions uh, late yesterday and overnight, we, of course, helped to push higher. But as I mentioned, the dollar weakness um, really from the Fed last week, and um, that, that has helped us push, push higher. Uh, whether we have a bit more room to go, we'll, we'll come on to. Um, but yeah, decent push here for, for gold, and I know certain people. Uh, certainly Amplify will be happy to, to hear that. I know Tommaso was in a long and, and, and Will was, was in for a while. Uh, but let's have a quick look over that chart here. Certainly uh, been a, a bit of a journey. It wasn't too long ago, certainly uh, last, and this is a weekly chart here, certainly last summer where people were, were saying, well, gold has had it now. Gold has had it. And it was, you can see here, down the 13th of August, really pushing low. You could see the, the trend line that had broken from the 2016 and 2017 uh, lows as well. Uh, break of that, however, we did then push higher, helped by uh, the weakness of the dollar last year, the dovishness of the, the Fed and the geopolitical tensions also helping us push on here. And finally, finally breaking above the double top from February uh, and then June 2016 level uh, as well. The highest since May 2013 overnight. We're now trading uh, on August 2013 levels on the futures. You can see just a few more uh, dollars above and we'll be at that key level. Where do we go? Can we continue to push higher? Uh, well, I think there's gonna be a number of factors determining that. Uh, if we have a, a look at the, well, the calendar for today, just to identify possible moments where the dollar or otherwise may, uh, may move, certainly not in the morning. Then you've got Richard, Richmond Fed at three. I wouldn't be looking at that for, for gold, to be honest. So you, with, with Trump, any tweets on the Fed, another attack on the Fed yesterday, helping to weep the dollar. We'll come on to his tweets in a moment. But what is quite interesting here is looking at the speakers today. You've got quite a few from the Fed. You've got, um, looking here, 145, you've got Feds Williams, you've got then Bostich, obviously Powell, which will be, for me, the second most important one before we go on to Barkin and then Bullard, the, the, the lone dissenter from last Wednesday's meeting, speaking overnight, 11.30 scheduled here. Um, now, those two there, Bullard and Powell, I think could absolutely uh, give us an opportunity to uh, 
uh, see where this market goes, not just the, the gold, but the dollar in general. We have had some weakness certainly over the last few trading sessions, and whether that continues or not, we may get a bit more of an indication here. Powell, who uh, I mentioned speaking at, at six o'clock, is uh, speaking at a, a consul, uh, council sorry, on, on foreign regulations. Uh, according to reports, he is expected to talk about big picture events like the broader challenges of the Fed. So any comments regarding that will be key. He'll move the markets uh, if he comments on uh, what it is that policymakers are, are looking to determine whether they're going to cut in July or not. So certainly if you're trading the US dollar, come six o'clock, I would be, to be honest, unless it's, it's a, a new, uh, a relatively old trade, I would be looking to exit position certainly ahead of that. Bullard, who I, I do think could, uh, have uh, more of a chance of moving things. He's uh, speaking obviously later on and scheduled to speak at a round table dinner organized by MNI News. Without a specific topic, Bullard will be free to talk about whatever uh, he wants and, and what uh, data other members will be looking at when they make their interest rates decision. So that will be something to, to focus on, um, certainly as we go into uh, the back end of the session. Other than that, the calendar is relatively quiet. So it could be in not just those two that I mentioned, but you've got speakers from, from ECB's uh, De Guindos in, well, just coming out now. So if anything comes out of, of significance, uh, I'll let us know. He's just coming out here. Banks, profitability prospects could thus be dampened. Yeah, nothing, nothing of note really for, for the Euro. Uh, just uh, keeping an eye on that pivot as we are seeing a bit of a, a reversal. But then you've also got the, the multitude of, of Fed speakers and then ECB's Kerr uh, just 15 minutes after Powell uh, as well. The main headlines uh, overnight, certainly the, the one that will catch the, the attention uh, is the new sanctions that have been placed on Iran. Uh, previously, and, and we know this already, that the US has, has sanctioned more than 80% of Iran's economy uh, according to State Pompeo, who was mentioning this uh, yesterday, who is visiting Saudi Arabia uh, and the UAE to rally a front against Iran. I mean, if we just, we'll come back to, to the headline here, but if we just have a quick look at, at the markets here. You've got stocks at all-time highs. Yes, we, I mean, you could argue from the high of today, 58, we've done 11 points to where we're trading. You know, Cash Open does that. It's not the biggest reaction that we've seen. T notes higher in the morning, but you know nothing. You know half of that move has already been done, and we're actually uh, pretty much flat for the day, given you know a few ticks here or there. Gold it has been pushing higher, and of course, then you could then argue uh, that it is a clear risk-off move. But you've got the weakness of the dollar as well, and what a recovery, by the way, at, at uh, six to only put us 15 bucks up. For the day. Uh, so is this headline a game changer? For me, not quite yet. For me, not quite yet. But it will grab attention uh, and certainly uh, looking at uh, you know stocks and, and safe havens, the continuation strategy if the highs or lows were to break could be the way to look at it. Uh, I just wouldn't be aggressively selling stocks right now. Um, you know, rather letting the market tell me what's what's gonna go on. Uh, Trump has, has coupled uh, his maximum pressure campaign of sanctions with invitations to sit down with Iranian leaders. So saying how they want to, to do a deal and they're willing to, to talk, uh, but then going and placing the, the sanctions as well is, is quite uh, ironic, I guess, from the, the US president. And Iran didn't take to this too kindly, saying you cannot start a dialogue with someone who is threatening you, who is intimidating you. Uh, certainly, we've heard that uh, in similar talk from, from China as well. And, and whether the, the G20 meeting goes ahead or not, this could help weigh on stocks into the back end of the week. This Iranian uh, situation at the moment, I don't necessarily see escalating uh, for now. Having a look at oil prices as well, it is down actually on the day and pretty much bang in the middle give or take a, a few cent of, 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 the, of the week's range so far. I know, albeit from yesterday and uh, the high and low, but pretty much in the middle. So maybe looking for, for longs if we can break the highs on, on oil, but for now it seems relatively calm and 
under control. At the United Nations on Monday, uh, this is when those comments from Iran were, were said, so yesterday, about how uh, you can't do talks with someone who is, who is threatening you. But even before the, the new penalties were announced, the US has applied sanctions to almost 1,000 uh, Iranian entities, including banks, individuals, ships, and aircraft. May, uh, you know, so a month ago, the Trump administra administration prohibited the purchase of Iranian iron, steel, aluminium, and copper. This has been going on for a while, uh, so it's just adding fuel to the fire. But you know, if we have a look back at uh, you know the, how we've got here, I wouldn't say stocks certainly are, are too bothered uh, about this, and their bigger concern for the moment is upcoming G20 and then the comments uh, from the Fed and whether we're going to get a continuation of this dollar weakness or not. And of course, with uh, equity, uh, you know, rates looking like we're actually going to have a cut. Tension spiked in, in the Gulf since May. We had the, the tanker, uh, Gulf of Oman, of course, that led to a brief rally uh, in the price of oil. We did then recover that, and now we're, we're trading near 58, which for me is obviously a, a key level from where we talked about in the briefing yesterday. You know, just having a look at this longer term, why is 58 important? Well, it just needs a little bit of a, a refresh here, the, the chart. Let me just remove everything off here on, uh, on the chart. Having a look here at oil, you can see just those previous lows coming back from May this year before the push down at the, uh, in the last day of the, of the month. Or, uh, the second last day. We're now back there. $58, massively important. Can we close above there this week? Or is that going to be a short-term top? I'd put it down to you know, the importance of, of technicals right now. 55 was key. You can see why from the high that we had on the 10th of June. The failure to make that, that uh, new low uh, on the 12th and we pushed on. Next key level to the upside, certainly from just a, a support resistance point of view, 60 bucks also another psychological handle. So it seems in the balance for now, uh, and this story on Iran, not enough just yet to help us push higher, despite the fact that the dollar is weak, which of course would help uh, oil price. Um, so yeah, one to keep an eye on, but not necessarily one to ignite things uh, straight away. Um, trade, G20 coming up. The, the headline from, from Bloomberg overnight, Trump and Xi to seal a deal. Traders aren't holding their, their breath. Um, the general consensus, of course, is uh, that there is going to be a meeting. Trump's tweet caught the market off guard last week. We had a, a decent push higher, helped by the, the dovish Fed. But you can see, really, from if we have a look at the, well, the Monday last week, where we were range-bound here, just draw an X because we've got the trend line on. You know, we have had a decent push from 2,900, which offered a, a level of resistance in previous trade to Monday. We're now 46 points higher. To the high, uh, we were 69 points higher. So a decent push helped by the idea that there is going to at least be a meeting, but not necessarily that there's going to be a deal. With the, the dovishness of the Fed, talk of two hikes, like Anthony was mentioning last week, Trump can set, set, step up his hawkish rhetoric. He's done it with Iran. He can now absolutely do it with China. Uh, you know, he was uh, blacklisting more technology uh, firms over the weekend, so he knows what he's doing. Uh, I still stand by the fact that I think he's just shot a bit too early here with the, the positive China news, obviously the election year uh, perhaps behind his thinking. Um, je uh, Chinese equities, uh, if I can just bring those into to picture. Uh, here you can see the, the recovery that they have had since the idea that they're going to meet. The general consensus on Chinese equities, uh, according to uh, some analysts, is that they won't actually come under too much pressure, whatever happens at the talks, or if there is even talks. Uh, they said the, the downward price action wasn't too severe as the trade dispute escalated because institutional investors hadn't piled into a merging market rally in the first quarter. So while we would not advocate fully uh, allocating back into high beta emerging market, market uh, equities and risk on gi giving the real risk to growth, the fundamental story, nothing is screaming out to us to be fully defensive either. So other comments to, to bear in mind, and, and this uh, article here does go through some of 
those here. Um, let me just bring that into to picture. Da -da. There was yeah. I think that the uncertainty surrounding. Here we go. I was going to say I thought the the article disappeared there for a moment, but uh, here are a few snippets of what people are. Uh, viewing ahead of the, the meeting. Nobody is really expecting anything concrete. There is very slim chance that we'll get a solution to the trade issue. The market has already discounted bad news for a worst case scenario. Our position is to take a wait and see approach. We're waiting for things to get worse on a much larger scale before buying the dip. Uh, Brian Chen there, I think a lot of people are certainly looking at that over the coming years. Uh, but you know, this you know, sentiment leading up into the, this meeting is you know, pretty, pretty bad that they're not actually going to get anything done. The fact that they're talking is what's pushed prices higher. So even if they weren't, uh, you know, no deal was struck, and you no, know, I don't think the market is expecting that. Just the fact that they're talking, and Trump, I'm sure, will say they had constructive talks. Well, stocks should remain pretty elevated. We did a, a quiz, uh, a little survey after the briefing yesterday on on what uh, the traders here. Uh, believe the bias for, for US stocks would be this week, and this was before the, the sanctions on Iran, uh, and the majority, or the, the highest answer was that stocks would actually come lower. You could argue that a bit of that is just down to the fact that we are at these all-time highs again. It is a case of taking profit, um, and regardless of what happens in the G20, it, you know, we're not going to see a massive uh, correction. If we were to see hawkish chat from the Fed, and let's go back to that calendar, Powell and, uh, and Bullard may give uh, you know that opportunity. Then sure, we could drift that lower uh, in stocks. But it seems that you know the the rate cuts are, are now you know being priced in. It might even be that we're getting a, a double uh, cut in one at July. You know that's just going to add to the fire to push this market higher uh, with the the dollar weakness. G20. Uh, it seems as we're getting closer, what was thought to be such a big event is actually now being brushed to a side as not too much as expected. The opportunity for me will come on the flip side. So the you've got, you've got to think of it as really, the buying opportunity will come if they were to strike a deal. The chance of them doing that is low, so therefore the reaction will be high. And on the flip side, if the talks go really badly and you know China uh, and the US you know, do what they did back in uh, the beginning uh, of of May, and uh, say they're not going to come to any arrangement anytime soon, and then stocks can come off. Anything in between, talks going well, progressing. We had a good chat, uh, sideways movement, and then let the Fed dictate where this market uh, will go. That would be my uh, my opinion on things uh, going forward. Also, overnight headline wise, um, Boris Johnson. We've got to talk about Brexit got to talk about the new PM or supposedly the, the favourite for, for the new PM Boris Johnson saying he's serious about no deal Brexit threat uh, so yesterday seeking uh, to regain his momentum in the bid to become uh, the next Prime Minister he was saying that we need to take the country out of the European Union on October even if a deal with the bloc had not been reached we've heard this before um, but however you know in the build up to Certainly, the Conservative voting. He did lower his his hawkish rhetoric a touch uh, regarding No Deal. So just stepping it up a touch. However, not uh, influencing the pound too much at the moment. The pound very much a case of maybe wait and see to the back end of July when we have our our new PM in place. Uh, and more for now is getting dragged around by. Uh, the US dollar. We'll have a look at the euro pound slightly as there was a couple of reports regarding that. But Boris Johnson, uh, the former London mayor, still the front runner uh, in the race to succeed May. Uh, his comments were, my pledge is to come out of the EU at Halloween on the 31st of October. And the way to get our friends and partners to understand how serious we are is finally, I'm afraid, to abandon the defeatism and the negativity that has enfolded us in great cloud for so long and to prepare confidentially and seriously for a no-deal outcome. He said he did not want the no-deal outcome, but it was necessary uh, to, to go and put with that and, and prepare for it going forward. All things that we've heard before. Uh, so with the headlines, if we have a, a, you know, a bit of a, a recap, you've got the well gold pushing high, dollar weakness, uh, and potentially a bit of risk off. You'd have to say that, that's fair enough. 
the Fed situation, we've got speakers today. So being aware, uh, certainly, uh, of Powell at six, Bullard this evening, they're going to be the main ones to focus on. I think Bullard will offer the best opportunity as it stands right now. The Iran situation, risk off in the market, oil not necessarily buying into it uh, at the moment and is pretty much flat for the week. Very important area. Uh, here you can see again 58 to, to keep an eye on where we close each day and week. Uh, the trade situation, G20 as we drift down uh, towards it, not too much in the way of progress expected to be made. You had the, the two opportunities of a deal being reached or a deal not going to be reached for a very long time. That's your opportunity uh, for, for a trade uh, there. And then you've got Boris overnight stepping up the hawkish rhetoric, nothing necessarily new. But just a repeat or something that he hasn't said for a, uh, a while. Quick look at the calendar just to wrap things up before we have a look at some of these markets. Uh, you can see going through in the morning, it's likely to be quiet like it was yesterday uh, in the morning. Uh, patient trade, not looking to get too involved would be my advice. Even into the afternoon, the only uh, two bits of notice of data-wise, the Richmond Fed, unlikely to move markets, and the API, well, it depends how out of line uh, those inventories are. It's going to be about the speakers. We've had uh, De Guindos, not much in the way of movement from that. Again, quiet until we come into the afternoon and Fed speak and a bit of ECB from Kerr uh, as well. So that's going to be certainly from a schedule point of view uh, the driver uh, as well. Having a look at markets, the, the pound here, we had a look at oil. You can see the, the pound certainly here against the euro. Perhaps looks like it is going to be topping out a touch. We're almost reaching reaching uh, nought, well, where it did reach uh, nought 90, which is again a key level from a breakdown that we had back in Jan January last year. It's been a strong push higher. Uh, just looks like the, uh, from, uh, yeah, literally as we then hit the low from the year, on the 5th of the 3rd and, and overnight over the weekend, the 6th of May, it's been one way traffic to the upside. Uh, the last article I do want to uh, just go over here is uh, the pound looks even worse than the euro. You've got some analysts saying um, that uh, it's likely to uh, you know, go to, towards 92 pence per euro by year end, about 3% below current levels. And, and this is not great for, for those that are looking to go on their, their summer holidays. Um, if you look back from where we were in May, uh, percentage-wise, well, I don't even want to look at this as I'm off to Madrid shortly. Yeah, 5%, not looking uh, too good uh, for the pound. However, I think ahead of um, the 23rd, 24th, 22nd, that sort of time where we're looking like we're going to have the, the new PM, that's when it's uh, certainly scheduled for anyway. Uh, not much can really be made in the way of progress, so I think we can drift higher. Uh, what happens from then on might be the opportunity to to get short uh, euro pound or long the pound in that case. From a gauge of sentiment, certainly uh, I find this very useful with the dollar pairs and just drawing up these trend lines here. If we were to get below this trend line, for example, okay, well, the market might be telling me that we're now looking to come lower. Uh, but for now, certainly this market is favoring the upside. Key resistance, uh, so be keeping an eye on that. Hopefully we do not get another 3% move uh, in this market higher uh, as we go through the summer. Stocks, certainly from the, the EU Open, just recovering a touch and the, the, the DAX only now four points below where it opened, uh, recovering some of that loss. Gold looking like it wants to have a no, another go, pushing that high. Euro held well on the pivot and the pound pushing higher for more a technical reason uh, has remained higher above what was its previous high of the day at 128. Hope you all have uh, a good trading day. Any questions as usual, please uh, do let me know um, and I'll catch you in the chat, if not.